Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another weekend watch list. Today, we're going to discuss stocks, cryptocurrencies, commodities, and indexes, as well as explore what has happened in the market and the outlook to come. Let's dive into it. Well, welcome back, everybody, to the show where we discuss macro lead indicators and the hottest charts together. If you like anything to do with markets, remember to subscribe and, of course, smash that alert button. S&P 500 rises for six straight week as focus shifts to Fed meeting. Inflation data the standard and S&P 500 extended its winning streak for the sixth straight week, marking the longest rally since November 2019. This surge follows the parsing of hotter-than-projected November jobs data, with investors eagerly anticipating next week's key Federal Reserve meeting and inflation reports. The benchmark equity index closed Friday's session at 4,604, up from last week's close of 4,594. Noteworthy sector performances included communication services and consumer discretionary, each rising more than 1%. Technology, industrials, and healthcare also recorded gains, while energy experienced the steepest decline at 3.3%. Materials, consumer staples, real estate, utilities, and financials also closed lower. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, total non-farm payrolls increased by $199 last month, surpassing the consensus estimate of a $185,000 gain. The market widely anticipates the Federal Open Market Committee FOMC, to maintain its benchmark lending rate in the upcoming week, as indicated by the CME FedWatch tool. Fed Chair Jerome Powell, in statements the previous week, cautioned against premature speculation on interest rate cuts, asserting the FOMC's readiness to tighten policy further if necessary. Since March 2022, the committee has implemented interest rate hikes, totaling 525 basis points to address inflation concerns. Upcoming economic highlights include official readings on consumer inflation and producer prices for November. Sector highlights, communication services, Alphabet, Google, rose 2.5%, with its Google unit introducing the artificial intelligence model Gemini in various products, including the AI chatbot Bard. Healthcare, the White House outlined new measures aimed at lowering prescription drug costs and preventing anti-competitive mergers. ABV, ABBV saw a 4.1% rise, agreeing to acquire Cerevel Therapeutics, Ceri, for $8.7 billion. Consumer Staples, Walgreens. Boots Alliance, WBA, gained 11%, countering an 8.1% slump in Brown Foreman. Walgreens announced expanded COVID-19 and flu testing and treatment options in the U.S., while Brown Foreman cut its annual sales outlook following its fiscal Q2 miss. Financials, Citigroups, C. Jane Fraser joined the growing list of bank chief executives warning about a potential economic recession. Wells Fargo Investment Institute separately predicted a moderate economic slowdown, leading to a cooling in inflation and potential monetary policy easing, followed by an economic recovery in the latter part of the year. On the economic front, next week's calendar includes reports on retail sales and industrial production for November, along with the New York Fed's Empire State Manufacturing Index for this month. Stay tuned for further insights into the market trends and developments. Despite the S&P 500 being within 5% of its all-time high, an interesting observation emerges as less than a quarter of the index's stocks are within 10% of their respective all-time highs. This figure is notably lower than the historical average, suggesting a potential lack of broad-based strength across individual stocks within the index. While the overall index may be buoyed by the performance of certain leading stocks or sectors, a more comprehensive analysis at the individual stock level reveals a divergence in performance. This discrepancy could be attributed to various factors, such as variations in sectoral performance, company-specific fundamentals, or market sentiment affecting different stocks in distinct ways. Investors and analysts may scrutinize this data to discern trends in market breadth and identify whether the current momentum in the broader market is driven by a select few stocks or if it is more broadly distributed across a significant portion of the index. Understanding the underlying dynamics of individual stock performance can provide valuable insights for making informed investment decisions and assessing overall market health.
The statement suggests that U.S. Treasury funds experienced a substantial outflow of $4.8 billion over the past week. Such outflows from Treasury funds, which are generally considered safe haven assets, could indicate a shift in investor sentiment. Investors tend to move funds out of Treasuries when they perceive higher opportunities or returns elsewhere in the market. This movement could be influenced by various factors, including changes in economic outlook, interest rate expectations, or shifts in global market dynamics. In case you're wondering, the liquidity backstops keep cranking to ever more highs. Bank reserves increased by another $72 billion last week alone for a grand total of $368 billion added since the beginning of October, with a quarter trillion dollars added since the October lows. A Fed pause could send stocks higher, but the macro backdrop doesn't support a full-fledged bull run. It's only a matter of time before the economy weakens noticeably. As indicated by the yield curve inversion, the Wall Street Fear and Greed Index is currently at 68 to 100, indicating a greed sentiment. The note suggests that the market is approaching extreme greed territory. Historically, when sentiment reaches such extreme levels, there is a tendency for stocks to experience pullbacks. The Fear and Greed Index is a tool that combines various indicators to gauge investor sentiment and assess whether the market is in a state of fear or greed. Extreme levels of greed may indicate overvaluation and potential vulnerability to market corrections. Let's analyze some charts. What charts I'm looking for this week starting with the SPY one hour chart? What's happening here? If the price manages to go above 462, I believe we will see an all time high soon. However, for a downside scenario, we need to see the price below 456. Moving on to the next chart, the QQQ one hour chart. It's currently ranging between 384 and 394. If the price manages to go above 394, we will likely see 400 as the next target. Conversely, if the price declines at 394, the next support levels will be 387 and 384 on the downside. This Tesla chart shows that the price wants to go higher. I will definitely be watching Tesla for the next week. I'm bullish overall on Tesla. The last time oil experienced a death cross, the VIX hit 35. Now the VIX is being held down by rampant call option speculation. When oil breaks to new lows, it will confirm a global recession. At that point, someone is going to be in for a shock, and it won't be me. The anticipated third gold bull run since 1971 is approaching. These generational moves have historically created substantial wealth, offering life-changing opportunities if navigated wisely. Once the price surpasses the blue line, it's game on. Are you keeping an eye on gold? Perhaps Christmas comes early. The bond market is not reacting favorably to this jobs number. Bonds were already overbought leading into this report. This outcome also practically ensures that Powell will take action on the markets next week, considering his warning from last week was overlooked. In the last BTC chart, I'm still bullish. We may see 48K soon. I highly recommend not shorting yet. We need some more development and price adjustment. Here are the significant market moving events in the USA from the economic calendar for next week. Monday, 10 year auction. Tuesday, December 12th, CPI and core CPI. Wednesday, core PPI, Fed interest rate decision and FOMC press. Thursday, Retail sales and initial jobless claims. Friday, PMI. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys next week. Bye for now.